So, you've tried speed ramping and it just doesn't look natural. You've been pulling some levers and slapping motion blur on it doesn't seem to work either. Don't you worry, I'm about to show you my secret to becoming an excellent speed ramping artist. Oh, and the reason I'm in this weird location is because we're working on a brand new Premiere Pro course. So, don't get used to it. Alright, let's open up Premiere. First, find or create some moving shots. Let's use Jordi's Tesla for example. Make sure the shots follow each other in movement. For example, in the first clip we're turning the camera clockwise while going backwards. And for the second shot we do the exact same thing. That way the shots will transition into each other more smoothly. Same thing for a left or right pan, basically any movement. Now in the timeline, drag the clips in the correct order. We're gonna use time remapping or speed ramping to create some awesome transitions. First, right click the small effects icon on the first clip. Then go to time remapping and then speed. This will create a time curve that we can adjust. To adjust the speed of the clip, drag the line up or down. When you drag it, you can actually see the percentage that it plays faster or slower. Dragging it up will speed up the clip and if you drag it down, the clip will be played slower. Now what if we only want to speed up or slow down a specific part of the clip? Then hold down control on your keyboard until this plus icon appears. Click on the line and this will add a keyframe. Now you can adjust the speed of each side separately. You can also drag the keyframes away from each other and this will create a ramp. That way the speed will gradually increase or decrease by following this curve. Now, if you click on one of the keyframes, this lever will appear. You can actually click and drag it. This will ease the curve and then the speed ramp will be much smoother. To remove the keyframes, just select them and hit delete on your keyboard. And now that you know the core basics, we're gonna start speed ramping. First, I want this clip to come in fast and then slow down. To do that, move your playhead to the point where you want the speed ramp to be at its lowest. Then hold control and click to add a keyframe. Now drag it all the way to the beginning of the clip. To speed it up, drag the first line all the way up like this. Now we can smoothen the speed ramp by pulling the levers and look at that. Now I want the clip to go faster again and to do that, find the spot where you want the clip to speed up. Then again set a keyframe and drag it all the way to the end of the clip. Then grab the line again and drag it upwards to speed it up. Then smooth out the curve and it's that simple. Now that looks awesome, there's only one problem. It goes a little way too fast in the middle. Now to slow it down, drag down the clip to decrease the speed. That's better already, but because we slowed down the clip by 50%, we actually turned the 30 FPS clip into a 15 FPS clip. This is why you can kind of see the video stuttering. Luckily, I know a few ways that you can fix this. Right click your clip and choose speed and duration. Then we're gonna choose a time interpolation. By default, this is set to frame sampling. All this does is sampling the frames and then stretching them. You can also see an option called optical flow. This one will artificially make more frames to make the movement smoother. But this can cause image distortion. Frame bleeding basically puts crossfades in between your frames, resulting in a smoother movement as well. Now, the one you need to choose kind of depends on your shot. For this one, optical flow seems to work best. But if you're interested, I actually know a tool that can do this so much better than Premiere. It's called Topaz Video. Just drag in the clip and on the top right, set the frame rate from 30 to 60. This will double the frames, which means we can slow down the video so much without seeing it stutter. This kind of works the same as optical flow but Topaz just does it way better. On top of that you can also do a lot of other stuff like upscaling your video, adding stabilization, motion deblur and so much more. When you're done click the export button and drag your clip back in Premiere. If you now apply your time remapping to that clip the video will be super smooth even in slow motion. I'll leave a link to Topaz AI down below. Alright, now it's time to continue speed ramping. Drag this second clip against your first one and again move the playhead to the moment where you want the movement to end. Set a keyframe and drag it all the way to the beginning. Speed it up just like you've learned before and of course make the curve smooth. Now continue doing this for all your shots and even though we're not done yet, this video looks awesome already. Oh by the way, you can actually make some money by selling your videos and pictures on huge stock websites like Adobe Stock, Shutterstock, Getty Images and a lot more. Now you don't want to upload all your footage on these websites separately. That, that would be way too much work. Luckily, there's Wirestock, where you can simply upload your images and they will take care of distribution, so that you don't have to worry about anything. Oh, and they're also sponsoring this video, by the way. You also have your very own portfolio, where you can showcase your work and where people can actually buy it from you. The pictures you upload can literally be anything. Close-ups of animals, nature, objects, whatever you like. I really like to generate AI art and what I love about Wirestock is that I can sell these artworks as well. But 
that's not all. They also have an AI tool where you can turn text into images and if you want you can even add a reference picture to enhance the result. Then if you want you can select a style and then click on generate. They also added a new exciting feature which is still in beta. But what this does, it reimagines your picture and if you want you can even choose a style as well. And this obviously can also be sold on Wirestock. You can literally set up your own business on the side like that. You can try it out for free or use the code PB25 to get 25% off the premium plan. So start making money by clicking the link down below. And now back to speed ramping. In the next step we're gonna level up the speed ramps we created by using effects. To do that we're gonna use an adjustment layer. In the project window click the new item button. Then choose adjustment layer and drag it on top of your clips. Every effect we put on this clip will be applied to the clips underneath. We're doing it this way because if we put the effects on the clips they won't work properly because they have speed adjustments. Now in the effects library find the lens distortion effect and drag it on the adjustment layer. We're gonna use this to make the first transition super smooth. Head over to the effects controls and find the effect. Move the play edge to in between the two clips. Then decrease the curvature to around 20 or whatever fits your video. Then click the stopwatch icon to set a keyframe. Now grab the play edge and move it to the start of the transition. Then reset the curvature property. Move the play edge to the end of the transition and again reset the curvature. Now expand the velocity curve and pull the levers of the keyframes until you get a smooth curve like this. This matches the speed ramp animation. And that looks awesome. For the third clip we're gonna need some motion blur. Again drag an adjustment layer on top of the clips and go to the effects library. Then find the directional blur effect and drag it on the adjustment layer. As you can see there's already a natural amount of motion blur in the second clip so we don't really need it there. On the third clip there's absolutely no motion blur. Now to add some go to the effect controls. Then move the playhead to the end of the animation and set a blur length keyframe because we don't want motion blur at this point. Then grab the playhead and move to the first frame of the clip. Increase the blur length to whatever fits your video. Now of course we need to change the direction of the motion blur to the same direction as the movement in my video. This one is spanning so I'm gonna set it to 90 degrees. Expand the velocity curves and pull the lever of the second keyframe like this. That way you'll ease in the keyframe. Now I applied these techniques to all my clips and this is what I came up with. That looks awesome. Now next you want to learn how to turn videos like this into short form content using Adobe's generative fill. And you can learn everything about that in the video on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, stay creative.